This is part 27 of Angular 6 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing edit operation in a reactive form. We'll use this create employee form for both creating a new employee as well as editing an existing employee. For creating a new employee, we already have this create route. To support editing an existing employee within our app routing module, we need a new route. So let's make a copy of this create route and then change the bits that are required. The path is edit. To be able to edit a specific employee details, we need to pass that employee ID as a route parameter. I'm going to name this route parameter ID. Now on our list employees component, when we click this edit button, we want to redirect the user to this new edit route. So within our list employees component view template, on the edit button, let's include click event binding. The method that we want to call is edit button click. We don't have this method yet. We'll create it in just a bit. To this method, we want to pass the ID of the employee whose details we want to edit. Notice we already have the employee object. So we are going to use its ID property to get the ID of the employee. This method receives employee ID as the parameter. The type of this is number. To be able to navigate the user to the edit route, we need Angular router service. So let's import it. Now we need to inject this router service into the component class. So let's use the constructor for that. The type is router. Finally, in the event handler method, let's navigate the user to the edit route. To this edit route, we need to pass the ID of the employee whose details we want to edit. Now in our create employee component, we want to read this employee ID from the edit route. For that, we are going to make use of the Angular's activated route service. So first, let's import it within our create employee component class. Next, let's inject this service using the constructor. Now in our ng on init lifecycle hook, let's use this activated route service and subscribe to its param map observable. On the activated route service, we have param map observable. So let's subscribe to it. Let's create a constant to store the employee ID. Remember on the edit route, we named the parameter ID. So we're going to use that name to read the employee ID value from our edit route. And we know it's a number. So let's typecast it to number. If this MPID constant is true, the we want to use it and retrieve that specific employee details. For that, I'm going to call a method. Let's name it get employee. And to it, we pass the MPID. We don't have this get employee method. We'll create it now. Outside of ng on init, let's create this get employee method. It takes employee ID as a parameter. Now to be able to retrieve employee details, we need our Angular employee service. So first let's import it. In addition to employee service, we also need I employee and I skill interfaces. So let's import both of them as well. Next, let's inject employee service using the constructor. In our get employee method, let's use this employee service to retrieve employee details. Now, if we take a look at this get employee method on our Angular employee service, it issues a GET request to the server-side REST API and retrieves that specific employee and returns it as an observable of iEmployee. So within our create employee component, when the request completes successfully, we are going to get an employee object back. The type of it is iEmployee. Now what we want to do with this iEmployee object is pass it to another method. I'm going to name it edit employee. We don't have this method. We'll create it in just a bit. Now, if there is an error processing the request, let's simply log it to console.
this edit employee method is the one which is going to do the actual work of binding the employee details that we have retrieved from the server to the form controls on our reactive form. This method receives the employee object as a parameter. Now what do we want this method to do? We want to bind the retrieved employee details to the form controls on this create employee form. For that we are going to use patch value method on our employee form. If you are new to patch value and set value methods, we discuss them in detail in part 7 of this Angular 6 course. On our create employee form, we have got several form controls and we can see them in ng on init here. Notice we have a form control for full name, contact preference, email and confirm email form controls are present in another nested form group, email group and we also have phone form control. So let's set values for all these form controls using patch value method. The syntax for using patch value method is right here. The value within full name form control must be equal to the value we have in the full name property of our employee object. And the same is true for contact preference form control, the two email form controls in our nested form group email group and phone form control. So let's include this code within this edit employee method. At this point, let's save all our changes and see what we have got. Notice when we click edit button, we navigate to the edit route and in the URL, we have the ID of the employee that we are editing. In this case, it is 1 and we see the employee details here. At the moment, on this form, we have three minor bugs and here is the first bug. Notice when we take a look at the valid property here, it is false and when the form is not valid, we want to keep this save button disabled because we don't want the user to save employee data if the form data is not valid. So let's disable the save button if the form is not valid. So in our create employee component view template on the save button, let's bind to disabled property. We want to keep the button disabled if the employee form is invalid. Notice now the save button is disabled. That's because our employee form is invalid. Now if you're wondering why is this employee form invalid, well that's because on this email form control, we have a custom validator and we can see that within ng on init right here. Notice on the email form control, we have this email domain custom validator attached. So if the email domain is anything other than dell.com, this validator fails. However, the validation error message is not displayed until this email form control is touched or dirty. When I touch the email form control and leave it, that's when we see this validation error. As we are editing employee details here, it makes more sense to display this validation error if the data is invalid rather than waiting for this email form control to be touched or dirty. So to fix this, we have to modify the logic slightly in log validation errors method implementation. Here is that log validation errors method and this is the condition to display the validation error. If the abstract control is not valid and if it is touched or dirty, only then we store the error message in the form errors object and that gets displayed to the user. Now here we want to do another check. If we are editing an existing employee details, then we know the value in these controls will not be an empty string. So in addition to checking if the control is not valid and if it is touched or dirty, we also want to check if it is not an empty string. So let's include another or condition here. So if the abstract control value is not an empty string and if it is not valid, then we want to display this validation error. So let's save these changes and take another look. Notice now on the initial page load, we see the validation error as expected. We don't have to touch or make this email form control dirty for this validation error to show when we are editing and existing employee details. But when we are creating a new employee, notice it still works exactly the same way as before until we touch the email form control 
and leave it, we don't see the validation errors. At the moment, there is another similar validation issue on this form. Notice when email and confirm email values do not match, we do not see any validation error. Remember, in one of our videos in this series, we implemented a custom cross-field validator and that compares email and confirm email form control values. If they do not match, it displays a validation error. At the moment, even when we touch the confirm email form control and leave it, we don't see that validation error message. The validation error message is only displayed when we make this confirm email form control dirty. Now, when we are editing an existing employee details, if the data is invalid, it makes more sense to display the validation error right away instead of waiting for this confirm email form control to be touched or dirty. So to fix this, we have to change the logic within our custom cross-field validator. This is our custom validator function. I'm going to include another AND condition here and then include these two conditions in a pair of parentheses. Now, when we are editing an existing employee details, this confirm email control value will not be an empty string. So this condition right here is going to return false. And at the moment, our email control value and confirm email control value do not match. So this condition here is also going to return false. So the control will come into the else block and return this key indicating that there is a validation error. Notice on the initial page load, we see the email validation error. As soon as we start to type, we see our custom cross field validator, email and confirm email do not match. When the values match, the validation error disappears. And if we take a look at the save button, it is still not enabled and the valid property of our employee form is also still false. That's because these three skill related form controls are invalid. So let's make them valid. Notice now the save button is enabled. The valid property is also true. Now the ID of the employee that we are currently editing is one. If we take a look at the data that is returned for this employee by the REST API, Notice, in addition to full name, contact preference, email and phone, we also have the skills data returned, but we are not binding the skills data to our employee form. Remember, within our employee form, skills is a form array. Binding existing data to a form array is slightly different. We'll discuss how to do that in our next video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.